Hello, and for this week's newsletter, I wanted to walk you through a little bit more of a technical process for how we create um, thumbnails for YouTube videos, for markers, where you've had a long form video, you've taken and split it into segments for your YouTube channel, and you've got some reels there. Now, when I do that, I tend to do that across 30 to 45 minutes worth of transcript, and I probably come out with 10 to 15 or more individual segments and creating the thumbnails for those for YouTube is really laborious but it's actually something that you really need to think about doing because it really does finish off the the look of your YouTube channel or wherever you're putting them wherever you're hosting them um, you know even on LinkedIn when you're uploading a video now you can add the thumbnail for that particular video so that it's not just kind of you halfway through a conversation and it gives that really professional touch to things. But so far, I've refused to do it because the workload that it creates is too much. Um, so I tend to create one for the main uh, the main video, and then for the rest of it, I don't really do that, and I should. Um, and I've been playing about with the idea of using the Canva bulk upload feature, which I'd not come across until recently. But I've been struggling for a use case. And I'm not going to lie, I, I found some guys doing this on YouTube and I thought, you know what, this is great, but I'm going to take it and do it my way, which is what I do. Um, so I'll be honest, I'm not going to bore you with uh, using ChatGPT. Either you use it or you don't. I think you should, and I'll give you the prompts in the newsletter to use it. Um, I'm going to pop in here now. I've got two Canva windows open, and there's a reason for this is... Some of the functionality that you need to do this is only available in the web version, and I have no idea why. But I'm going to start off in the desktop app, which is what I assume most people will probably be using here. So I'm just going to create a design, and it needs to be, if you type in YouTube at the top, you get this option here for a YouTube thumbnail, and it's got the, the, the right sizes in there already. So it brings you to a blank screen, everybody's horrified. But actually, if you then go in here, tech let's say and then you've got hundreds and hundreds of ideas for what you can do for your uh, thumbnails now I quite like a lot of these uh, but we want something fairly simple for now so let's let's have a look um, this one for example let's see if we can do this a little bit right and um, obviously this bits customizable so I'm just going to put um, at javelin content it's not really my brand and theme but we'll get the idea for it now, what we need to do is, it's really hard to do it this across two lines. It's all right if you want to do that manually, but when you want to do something like this where you're going to automate it, you need it to really be uh, all in one text box for all the titles. Now, we're at size 128 here. I'm going to go to size 90, just so that it gives us a bit more space if our heading is longer. So that's it. Like, let's let's assume that this is this is roughly what we're going to use, right? And and you can use your own themes and designs. But it's exactly the same process. So back here on ChatGPT, we have these options. I'm going to copy those. And you can just hit that copy button here, or you just use Command and C. I'm on a Mac. I use Command and C, Control C if you're on a on a PC. And we're going to come over here to Apps. I'm going to search in the top for Bulk. There's only one app that comes up, which is Bulk Creator. And you've got the options here too. You can plug in other data sources if you've got something a bit more live. You can upload a CSV, which if you've got a larger amount of quotes that you want to create at any one time, I would advise you do that because then you can, you've got it saved down. So if something needs to be recreated down the line, it's there. Um, you can enter data manually. Now, interestingly, what you can also do is you can add images in here as well. So if you want to put a custom image, maybe um, based on the person that's being quoted, you can absolutely do that. Um, so that's something else to play about with and I'm just going to delete this column I'm going to put those in there so again control V command and V if you're on a Mac so put a title in there so that's the, that's the heading that we're going to look for these are all just the quotes that we've been given um, done and what I've realized is short center. probably don't even need to tell it to do that to be honest because I've just realized there uh, I'm going to show you how to do it so you can have the main title and like a sub context for the thumbnail in there as well which i think works really well um but if you just want to do it as a heading then then literally this just do step one here so i let this populate there's only a few and again just watch out 
it uses Americanizations a lot. I use that superpower GPT interface, but you've got to remember to turn it to language UK if you're in England. So there we go. We've got we've got these now. I'm going to copy those across. Now to get rid of this, what I'm going to just do is just go back and then enter data manually again. Paste them in. Make sure I get the headings in there as well. There we go. So now it's aligned. Head in, so we head in, and all the bits and pieces in there. You can see here it's come up with the two data fields now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this and I'm going to right click. I'm going to connect data and it gives me the option of the two things that we've got here. So that's going to be heading. I'm going to right click here. I'm going to connect data. Now what it's got, it's got interesting. So they've put that in as a shape as opposed to so they can get the shaped box behind it. They put it in as a shape as opposed to text. So let's just create our own and let's put it as size 40, for example. And I'm going to put um, a background behind it so it's similar to how they had it. I'm going to change this this button here does the background. I'm going to set that to white, which is going to make the text disappear. But then I'm going to change the text color to black. There we go. So that's going to look nice. And what that'll do is that'll change the size of that background color with the length of the heading or the subheading. So now what we can do is now I can click into that and I can connect data, subheading description, make sure that comes up here. And then I want to make sure this is a real world scenario for you people. So you can see here, there's quite a lot of these where they're broken into more than one section. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask it to recreate that and split these headings into two so we can have two fields in here. Um, I'm going to delete that. That. I need to go back and delete these all as well, which is so I'm going to have like what they had. I'm going to have heading one, heading two, so that you can see it. It's done exactly what I've asked it to do. And again, this is why I love ChatGPT. That would be quite a laborious process in any other any other way of doing things. You have to go through every single one bit by bit. It'll just kind of tick away for itself. Um, right, let's just get as it is. Let's go back back enter data manually there we go We've got them three let's just just keep it at three to keep it simple and um, so heading part one is going to go in there and i need to you can now see that there's no tick beside these two because we've changed the title of them we need to reconnect them again heading part one connect it there heading part two right now let's see how this works there we go that's worked and it's much more the original format as well with one line kind of stepped out we've got that nice sub text down here that works really well but now we've got these three separate thumbnails if you imagine if you've done this for 15 of them once you've set this template up you can just use it over and over again or you can you, you know you get much more confident with how you produce these things and as you can see there's loads and loads of different ways of doing these things um, but so the reason I have the web interface open is watch this so when I go to share it and I go to download now what you'd need to download is you download these as um, a JPEG, for example. Now that'll download all three of these as JPEGs in a zip file, unzip them, load them up onto YouTube. But one of the other things I'll talk about in the newsletter is what if I wanted to animate this to have it as an intro at the beginning of my video? So you want to stitch that back into the original video, for example. Or if you've used this to create quotes, now quartz images are great on their own, but actually sometimes it's nice just to have a little bit of animation that kind of attracts people's eyes. And you can upload them as a GIF on LinkedIn so that people can see that. So if I do um, animate on here, it's got magic animate up here, which is one of Canva's new features for their AI introductions, where it'll look at all the different ways of animating the content on your page. I think that's quite nice. Um, there's lots of different styles of doing that. Energetic, playful. Well, that's quite nice. I like that one. Right, let's do that just for the sake of the argument. So all of these now have that. And if I want to share that as a as a movie or as a GIF, watch what happens. Now it's going to give me all three pages, but do you know what it does? Is it stitches them together? It assumes it's all one GIF, so you'd have one followed by the other, followed by the other, and that isn't what we want to output. And again, if you want to do that as an MP4 for video, it's the same doesn't give you the option to output it. Also, consider the quality that you need. It's probably 1080p. 
So what I now need to do is I need to go to the web version and I'll have to refresh the page so you find all the recent designs. This is the last one that we've just created just now. I'll load it up and then you have to come back here and click in browser instead if you've got the app installed. If you just use the app, the website version of Canva, you don't need to worry about this because you'll be doing it in this interface anyway. So here it is, is exactly as we had it, just loading all the information up. But now when I go to share and download, you can download pages as separate files. So if you have turned this page into quartz images, for example, so let's have a look for motivational quartz. You know, if you use one of these designs, uh, I tend to find that there's better ones for like square images rather than the landscape ones. But if you have done that, you now can output these as you go. And it'll download them in a zip file, but it download them as three separate files, one for each of your designs with the animation built in. And the only other thing I would say is just to remember, um, if you want to select a slide, look up here, you've got how long it stays on screen for. If you've done this for a quart, you probably want to change that up to like 15 seconds. It's just not repeating all the time. It comes up once, gives people a chance to read it. And then after 15 seconds, it comes back up again. So if somebody's kind of looked away, their attention will be brought back to it and apply to all pages. So they're all on the same length. Hope that's useful, guys. Um, that's quite a long session. I will try and cut that down a little bit because there was some backwards and forwards in there. But just want you to show, even I make mistakes. It, there are always issues with how we do things, but hopefully when you see the, uh, the fully edited version, it'll be a bit more streamlined. And if you've got any questions or um, concerns, or you know you want somebody to do this sort of stuff for you, yeah. um, thanks for your time. Hope it's useful.